All right, so I have problem two here. Now, I have to be honest with you, this was the fastest problem for me. Uh, <laughs> mainly because this is something I've actually done in Java. Uh, so, my solution took about the same amount of time as theirs did. Uh, let's see, they're provided, they did a couple steps into theirs. They opened the file, created a document. Uh, here's all I did file object, open the file, read only, document, read file object in. And that's what I read in my text file. So it passed, pulled in the right document. Now I need to clean up the string. Now mine is a little bit different from theirs. Okay. You need to take the string, make sure it's all lowercase. I keep the white space. That's what I need to have. So, well, let's convert all to lower. Next we have to do, I'm going to have a result string. And for each character in my string, what I want to do is if car is alpha or car is some type of white space, let's go ahead and put it in there and put it inside of our results. And then it's return the result. And we try it out. Works no problem. Now they go into some explanation of what do we have to do to make sure we do the cipher correctly. Ordinal value of A is a 97. Ordinal value of Z is 122. We're going to use that information later. And the character for 97 is A. Character for ordinal of A. This is kind of doing an inverse function. If f of a is 97, then f inverse of f should give me back the original, which it does. And character is 122, well, that's z. Now we have our index cipher and the explanation of how it works. Again, my solution, I think, is pretty much the same as theirs. What we'll do is take this and cipher the first one, okay? Following our cipher. So, again, a few things I'm going to do. As I'm going through my code, it told me my very first letter is never going to change. So I'm not going to change it at all on the very first letter. So the value I'm going to change it by is zero. Then I need a result. We've said before we need a result. So there's my result string. And now for each character in the clean document, well, if it's a space, Leave Indy alone, leave it as zero. Go ahead, put that character inside of the result, and then continue. So go ahead and get out of the loop. Otherwise, the value is equal to the ordinal value of that character. If that value is greater than or equal to 97, and the value is less than or equal to 122, which means it is a character. Well, let's go ahead and see what we're going to change it by. The value is now going to be the value plus Indy. How much should we be changing by? Now, if it's the very first letter, Indy still can be zero. So we won't change it by anything on the first iteration through. But we do have a problem because we're increasing the value. There's a chance we could take it past 122. So if value is greater than 122, what we need to do is do value is now going to be 96 plus value minus the 122. How much past 122 did we go? And go ahead, add that to 96 instead. So now we have car2. This is our new character is equal to the character value of the value. <laughs> Result gets that character. So we'll now append that result, that character onto our result and change Indy by one. We're gonna move on to the next character, so increase Indy by one. And if it goes through and it finds a space, it's gonna turn around and reset it back to zero. So that's not gonna be a problem. Now, just in case we had some white space on there that we weren't supposed to have, let's go ahead and strip that off. I don't think there will be any, but just in case we had to get rid of that extra white space, 
and then return the result. It says we can try it. It does appear that it's working. Oh, string object is not callable. We have an error. Car2 equals car value. Oh, <laughs> silly. There we go. Typo. I put actually car instead of chr. <laughs> and there it is. Run the test cell. Passes, no problem. Now we need a decoder. Decoder is really just like running in reverse. In many ways, my code is the exact same as what it was. In fact, that's the reason why it is. I literally cut and paste the original code I had. So I'll put in the code and so I change. I cut and paste my encoder information. I put it in. It's now coming from the encoded doc. If it's a space, indie stays at zero. It gets put into the result and then continue. Otherwise, value takes on the ordinal, va the ordinal value for the character. It is now equal to value minus the indie in order to revert it back to where it goes. If it turns out we went less than 96, the new value is 123 minus 97 minus the value. Uh, because you can't use 96. If it's less than or equal to 96, we need how far below 97 is it? 97 is our letter A. So I just coded a little bit differently here. Car2, now it takes on character value. Result gets car2 added to it. The indices now goes up by one. If it turns out that our next thing is a space, it's going to reset it up here when it runs back through the for loop again. Again, I strip my white space and then return the result. If I look, the original was this, the encoder was this. I now decoded it. It did come back out, run the test cell, and it was done. Uh, this was to me the easiest one simply because. I pretty much had written this exact same encryption in Java once on a lark. So for me, it went quickly. I hope it did for you too. I don't think it was that bad. If anyone ran a problem, I'll bet most people ran into trouble with it, ran into it in the decoding side, probably not on the encoding side. And it had to do with this portion. I'll bet if someone ran into trouble with this, where you ran into trouble. So um, they did it a little bit differently than I did, at least with the way they wrote it. I was using shorthand sometimes, probably because this is how I actually code it in Java. So I don't think we had any major differences in how we coded it, though. So hope you got good full credit on this one. That's how I worked it. Have a good day.